Well, you asked for it. <laughs> so here we go. And you're not the only person who's asked for that kind of list. So I grabbed these from my shelf. They were handy. Not to overwhelm you, I'm going to give you a kind of a quick summary of these books and take a few moments to do this because this is a little overdue. I've been asked this question before. All right. So this is one of my favorite books. It's extremely accessible. It's often, it's particularly appropriate um, for uh, younger readers like teenagers and others, but certainly people, you know, people like me, old fogies, whatever, can still get value from it. Uh, Jamal Diogis, a beautiful writer, and as a teenager, I think about 16, he stole his mom's credit card and bought a one-way ticket to Hawaii. That's where the book starts. So it's amusing. It's a personal story. He ended up going on to Columbia and getting a master's degree in um, journalism. So he's an excellent, extraordinary writer. And I know him personally. He's a very good guy. And he learned to surf the physical waves in the ocean. And soon after, he began to learn to surf the waves in his own mind. And it's a very good introduction to Buddhist practice in the framework of a personal journey uh, of development as a young surfer. Second, a wonderful collection of stories about the great teacher, arguably a saint, Deepama, who had an extremely difficult life. And in middle age, fairly late middle age, experienced a lot of tragedies and turned to Dharma practice, meditative practice, developed um, herself very rapidly, a very gifted meditator, and became a beloved teacher. Uh, including a teacher of people like Joseph Goldstein, Sharon Salzberg, Jack Kornfield, and others, uh, while being uh, Deepa Ma, the mother of Deepa, deeply grounded in householder life. You can just sort of see the picture itself. Extremely readable, full of short stories and short teachings, very heart lifting and inspiring uh, from someone who speaks right from the heart to the most penetrating of truths. Now, also, if you're looking for something more, um, you know, academic and comprehensive, this is, a, you know, I'm going to, with no disrespect, I hope, this is an anthology of the Buddha's greatest hits, in effect. This is a comprehensive summary of the earliest surviving written record of the teachings of the Buddha in the Pali canon, pulled together with translations from Bhikkhu Bodhi. You can see how much I've dog-eared it. Uh, I've read this book very carefully, you know, multiple times. It's just a comprehensive, clear guide to, all right, in the Buddha's words, what did the Buddha teach? Wonderful book. Okay? In the Buddha's words. Next, The First Free Women. This is a collection of fairly free translations of a uh, brief poems or teachings, including awakening poems from the earliest uh, Buddhist nuns. And you can imagine 2,500 years ago, living in a medieval, patriarchal, feudal system, uh, preliterate, uh, on mainly, uh, very poor medicine, slavery, war, terrible mistreatment of women was really common. Subjugation of women was very common. And their voices speak to us across 25 centuries and just pierce the heart. Let's see if I can read you a couple of some of my favorites. This is a very pointed one. So this is from Soma. A woman whose name is Soma. And I think it translates as happiness. So here we go. This is from the first free women, these early um, teachings. He said, how could a woman who knows no more than how to cook, clean, and make babies possibly reach the further shore, as a metaphor for enlightenment, on the way to which so many good men have drowned or turned back? I said, the mind is neither male nor female. When directed towards the arising and passing away of all things, 
it easily penetrates this mass of darkness. A beautiful summary of fundamental Buddhist teaching. Then she continues, be serious. What's a few inches of meat compared to the immeasurable reaches of the liberated mind? You know what the few inches of meat are that she's referring to. Two more. Not always so. Teachings from Suzuki Roshi. This is a lovely companion to his classic Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, which I would say has a, a lot of teachings in it that are a little more abstruse, a little more abstract, and not always so. These are very brief, um, two, three pages, pungent, pointed, wonderful. You can see how bookmarked it is as well. Um, for quite some time, I would read a chapter, a very short chapter to my wife uh, uh, while we before we went to sleep. And uh, I read it to myself while I was reading it to her. It was a very lovely thing to do at night um, before going to bed. And then last and probably least is my own Buddhist brain, which does contain a pretty thoroughgoing summary of major themes, not all of them, but major themes uh, in the Buddhist tradition, uh, you know, really uh, kind of grounded in a, in a more secular way of talking about them and embedded in a deeper understanding of our neuropsychology, our neurobiology, and how these major themes um, play out in our neurobiology in ways that are actually informative and useful in a really practical way. You know, the subtitle kind of says it, The Practical Neuroscience of Happiness, Love, and Wisdom. I really wish you the best in your journey. Find what calls you. It's okay to flip through these things. It's okay to stu study something more comprehensively. Uh, and, you know, blessings to you on your journey here.